Breaking news, the Hartford City Council has approved the development plan that includes a baseball stadium. Good evening, I'm Brent Harden. Thanks a lot for joining us. I'm Audrey Kuchin. The council just voted moments ago on the proposal to build the Rockhead Stadium in downtown Hartford. Fox Connecticut's Javon Vital live out there right now monitoring all the developments. He's bringing us the very latest. Hey, Javon. We'll repeat that. Hey, Brent, Audrey. Yeah, right now, the uh, Hartford Mayor, along with city leaders, are now here gathered in front of City Hall to give us their take and their reaction on what just happened as the city council just approved the downtown north project. So here now is Hartford Mayor Pedro Segarra along with city leaders. Good evening, everyone, and, and thank you so much for being here. Uh, tonight uh, was a transformative, very pivotal time for the future of our city. I want to first thank uh, Council President Sean Wooden and each and every one of the members of the City Council who took in the time to vet this project with our residents. Uh, this is a, a very important opportunity for our city, and I'm very eager to move forward. I want to thank uh, Center Plan and, and their leaders for believing in our city. I want to thank our Development Services Department, Tom Deller and the folks at Development Services for working so hard on this. And just everyone, Solomon, uh, New, Ritten, New Ritten Rock Cats for believing in our city. Uh, again, uh, I'm very, very, very thankful to the City Council to have put in all the work that they have during the past couple of months to make sure that they vet this project. And I, and I really want to thank them for their support. Mr. President. Thank you. All right. Uh, all right. So the, uh, I applaud the effort of our residents in this city who spoke loudly and often uh, to take in their input in the city council tonight. Uh, we took a step tonight which is going to add to jobs in our city, vibrancy, our tax base, and uh, we did it in a very thorough and diligent manner. There is lots of work to be done to bring this project to fruition, make no mistake about it. Uh, but tonight is a significant milestone for economic development and creating a new vibrant neighborhood connecting the north end of our city with our downtown area. And I am very proud of the uh, courageous and visionary vote of this city council uh, tonight, including Councilwoman Jennings here. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Jennings, say well, I'd just like to thank the mayor, the council, the treasurer, the um, Rock Cats Center Plan, and everyone who's been involved. This is the first time the unions have come together with municipality, with municipal government, and we've come together on behalf of the residents of this city with the understanding that the residents in this city need jobs and opportunities, and we have a responsibility as council to represent the entire city. So I want to thank everyone involved, the um, development services, everyone who was a part of this tremendous coalition to move our city forward. Thank you. And right now what you are watching live is city leaders discussing the vote that just came down late tonight. Voting uh, six, four, and three I'm sorry? abstaining. That means the rock hats are coming to Hartford. That right there was uh, Hartford Mayor any question, Pedro any Cigar, questions? along with other city leaders just okay. talking okay. about okay. the approval of the Downtown North project along with other city leaders. The uh, council voting just moments ago, six in favor, three abstentions. A very hotly contested meeting, a lot of people saying their pros and cons, a lot of passion in this room, which the meeting actually began at six o'clock, just to give you an idea of just how long this discussion had been going. Of course, there's still a whole lot more ground to cover, and this press conference is still going on. And, of course, we'll update you a little later on on this newscast and, of course, on FoxCT.com. Reporting live in Hartford, Javon Batal, Fox, Connecticut. All right, thank you, Javon. Breaking news right now in Norwalk. Uh, 95 northbound is closed between exits 13 and 14. State Police Lieutenant Paul Van Stels, Fox, Connecticut. There was an incident uh, on a bus when a trooper responded, uh, and that resulted in a shooting. Yeah, it's unclear if there are injuries, but we'll, of course, bring you the latest updates as soon as we do get them uh, on air and, of course, at foxct.com. We're also following uh, breaking news right now in Hartford. Police are on the scene of a shooting in the area of Franklin Avenue and Barker Street. 
Street. Deputy Chief Foley says the victim was shot in the stomach and taken to Hartford Hospital in critical but stable condition. We'll keep you updated as we do learn more. A rash of robberies reported recently pits innocent teenagers as the victims and their shoes as the target. Now Fox Connecticut's Bo Berman brings us more on this disturbing trend. Bo. Brent Audrey, we were contacted by a number of teens who say they have their concern now for their safety after recent robberies at both gunpoint and knife point. And it all centers around the trade and sale of collectible Nike and Air Jordan basketball shoes. This New Britain teen tells Fox Connecticut he was robbed at knife point while trying to sell his Nikes. He's part of a growing community of teens who buy, sell, and trade sneakers through local Facebook groups. They meet up with fellow collectors in person, dealing in cash. But lately, it's gone wrong. Kids are threatened to hold knives and people at gunpoint and so forth. All for shoes? All for shoes. With $500 price tags and up, it's not hard to see the thieves' motivation. If the person feels like they want that shoe, they'll do whatever it takes. We talk to more than 10 collectors tonight who prefer in-person sales to eBay because they pay cash and get the shoes right away. But they're also concerned by the risks. People could get hurt, they could get stabbed, killed. New Britain's Andre Zarate brought this pair of Air Jordan 9s to trade and ended up receiving fake shoes in return. Ray Jimenez says his Hartford Hospital co-worker had a deal go bad in Waterbury. He got robbed at gunpoint. For the shoes? For the shoes. Yeah, he had like four pairs of shoes and he actually got robbed for uh, his wallet cell phone and um, all his shoes. After hearing stories like that, Jimenez opened up the Enfield sneaker boutique Connect with Kicks back in August. That's why we did this store, basically just to, uh, you know, get those get those deals going where it's pretty safe to come here. The same exclusive shoes are sold on consignment, providing a secure environment for sales. DeJore Williams runs the store and also runs a Facebook sneaker trading group, boasting thousands of members. We went from 3,000 to 13 in a matter of two years. So honestly, the growth has been amazing. But buyers must be aware. In January, Bridgeport police arrested a teenager who pulled a gun on a West Hartford teen and his father who had driven there to meet and buy Air Jordans. And while the buying is unlikely to stop, sneaker lovers we talk to are warning others to watch out. Don't go alone. Meet up in a public place. Uh, just make sure you know who you're dealing with. We reached out to the Hartford Police Department about this. The spokesman said this is really the first time he's heard of the problem, but does advise buyers to follow the same precautions they would if using a site like Craigslist and also meeting in person for a purchase. Bo Berman, Fox, Connecticut. All right, Bo, thank you. A five-year-old girl says she found a gun stashed under her pillow at her father's home in New Haven. That's what the Hamden girl told her mother after visiting her dad for the weekend. The father, 42-year-old Shaquan Hayes, is a convicted felon and has been convicted of risk of injury to a minor as well as drug-related crimes. After this most recent incident, uh, he was arrested and charged with criminal possession of a firearm along with other charges. Police say they found a revolver in a bedroom mixed in with children's toys and clothes as well as drug paraphernalia. New at 11, a woman from Norwalk faces quite a few charges after she was chased by Massachusetts police, including a state police helicopter. They say a state trooper tried to pull over 22-year-old Rachel Simpson on I-290 in Worcester. That's when she led police on a 15-minute chase. The troopers say she refused to stop and uh, continued at relatively low speeds towards I-90, where she eventually pulled over. Simpson is charged with failing to stay to the right, a reckless operation of a motor vehicle, and failing to stop for police. Police in Westport are still looking for a wedding crasher who took off with a newlywed couple's gifts. Tonight, we are uh, getting a look at surveillance video of the suspect that police have released, and they hope someone recognizes Every the suspect. Fox Connecticut's Louisa Muller reports. Sunset, dazzling banquet hall, tables dripping with flowers. But one Westport bride got more than she bargained for. Basically, someone purported themselves to be part of the wedding uh, guests. You heard right, a wedding crasher. Police say this man, an unwanted guest, attended a wedding party at Westport's Longshore Inn Saturday night. But the white button-down bandit wanted more than just cake and champagne. Made off with the birdcage. Take a look at this surveillance video. You can see the front lobby of Longshore. Then, in the bottom right corner, the culprit running out with a birdcage filled with cards, cash, and checks for the married couple. Multiple units responded along with supervisors. Uh, they set up a perimeter because Longshore, the way it's situated, 
situated is surrounded on two or three sides by water. But despite a long search with police dogs, the thief got away. I ran a search. We were able to locate the birdcage, which had been emptied of its contents prior to being discarded. Now police are cautioning wedding venues and calling area police departments. We're reaching out to other police departments, uh, even in neighboring states, to see if this type of crime has uh, has occurred. And the couple is on their honeymoon, hopefully having a perfect time. Louisa Moeller, Fox, Connecticut. And police say they are still coordinating with the families of the couple to find out just how much money was in that birdcage. And of course, they're asking anyone with information to give them a call. Major changes planned for the busiest stretch of highway in Connecticut. The two and a half mile stretch of I-84 in Hartford from Flatbush Avenue to Interstate 91 interchange is uh, for the most part a raised roadway. The viaduct, however, has just about reached the life it was designed for and traffic is now more than three times its original designed capacity. There are four options currently on the table to rehab, rebuild or replace the viaduct. The cheapest option about two billion dollars would be a complete rehab of the current structure. The most expensive option would be around ten billion dollars to go underground with a tunnel. There's also talk about bringing the roadway down to ground level. Think about how the uh, eastbound and, and westbound lanes at certain parts of the city are separated by large distance of lands. You can put them into one corridor. So there is land available to make this all happen. Road engineers say any major changes to the highway through downtown probably won't be seen for another 10 years or so. A proposed cell tower in Glastonbury has residents up in arms and folks came out in droves tonight to express their concern with the proposed construction. The cell tower would be built off uh, Griswold Street near 7J's farm. The issue wasn't originally on the Glastonbury town officials agenda, but added after so many residents showed concern, saying the tower will not only ruin the aesthetics of the area, but is also a health concern. I just listened to some of these things about the danger to our children and and I'm like, enough is enough. Who would think that we would want this in our backyard? If you want it in your backyard, put it in your yard, but not here in Glastonbury. If built, the tower would be disguised as a tree. Residents are also concerned the tower will make property values in the area drop. So what's everybody doing? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Marfin. Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Gina McCarthy was in Connecticut today to discuss the links between a strong economy and a healthy environment and meet with former colleagues. McCarthy is a former state environmentalist here. She visited an aquaculture school filled with students focused on keeping the sound and its inhabitants around for a long time in the wake of climate change and urban advancement. These kids are the future. These kids are looking at the economies of tomorrow, not just today. These kids are part of research that's going to advise us on how you live sustainably in a changing climate. McCarthy also visited Bridgeport to discuss the Be Green 2020 plan. The multi-year plan is designed to modernize the city's infrastructure and enhance environmental quality. Still ahead tonight, how a nurse in Dallas is holding up after contracting Ebola. And soaring through the 70s once again tomorrow, our taste of summer continues. How much longer we have and when the storms roll in, full forecast after the break. Seventy six hospital workers who helped treat Ebola patient Thomas Duncan in Dallas last week are now being monitored for possible signs of the Ebola virus. CDC director Tom Frieden says this is a precaution after Dallas nurse Nina Pham contracted the virus during a breach in protocol at the hospital treating Duncan. Meanwhile, investigations into the breach are ongoing. Now for now, they've sent a team of medical experts to Dallas to uh, help care workers deal with the outbreak. What we are dealing with is a disease that's unfamiliar in the U.S. and caring for Ebola can be done safely but it's hard and we want to make sure that the protocols that we have and the support we have for healthcare workers are there on the ground so we can assist. And you know, I've, I've Frieden says Nina Pham is currently in stable condition. Like 
Severe storms ravaged parts of the southeast. In Alabama, a woman was killed and her husband injured yesterday when this large oak tree fell on their mobile home. Police say 75-year-old Shirley Hicks was sitting on her day bed when the tree fell on top of her. Her husband was hit on the head when part of the roof fell in, but he wasn't taken to the hospital. And all that bad weather and wild wind, a uh, roof collapsed. Uh, this happened at a used car lot. The severe thunderstorms are to blame for the damage in Decatur, Alabama. The carport fell over destroying the cars underneath underneath there. Luckily, there were no injuries since no one was there at the time. And it's true, the same front that brought that severe weather is actually going to pass through here on Thursday, but I don't want you to think that we're going to get exactly that same stuff. I don't think we're going to have any widespread wind damage, uh, but we will have some thunderstorms and there is a slight risk that some of those storms could be on the severe side with some gusty winds. The biggest thing I want you to take away from that front on Thursday by the time it gets to us is a cool down. We're also going to wash the humidity out of the air too. Look at these high temperatures today, low 70s in New London. That was the cool spot in the state. Bradley International Airport, just a degree shy of 80. Bet you guys thought you were done seeing this for the season. We're bringing back the frizz factor tonight. A five tomorrow ponytail weather. We're talking eight for Wednesday and for Thursday. You've been warned, and I think this will be the last time of this season that we probably end up using that graphic. Temperatures in the lower to middle 60s inland, middle and upper 60s for the Connecticut shoreline will drop a little bit tonight, maybe a couple of degrees. Then temperatures will hold steady as we head towards daybreak. So it's a mild start at the bus stop for the kids tomorrow. Temperatures will already be between 60 to 65 degrees. The clouds roll in again. We'll also have some patchy fog and drizzle in spots. Not everybody is going to see it. Uh, so it's a really murky start to the day again tomorrow. Again, temperatures beginning in the 60s by noon. We're already up into the 70s and high temperatures will be very similar, if not exactly the same as what we dealt with today in the middle to upper 70s. If we see a little bit more sunshine than I'm anticipating, it wouldn't be out of the question that some areas got close to 80 degrees. Chance for an isolated shower, especially later in the day. I think most of us are not going to see one. The better chance is going to be as this front and this is the one that you saw all that video of the wind damage from as this front comes through and that's going to bring us periods of rain as we head through the day on Thursday. So I wanted to show that to you chance for showers and thunderstorms not only in the morning but through lunchtime and even through dinner time and you can see all of this moisture linking up to the tropics. So obviously plenty of rain with that and again the slight risk for severe weather. It's not a huge concern but it's something that we'll just keep an eye on as we head in to you uh, the day tomorrow. We'll certainly give you more of an update. I also wanted to keep you posted on the tropics. This is Hurricane Gonzalo, our second major hurricane of the season. 125 mile per hour winds. So here's Puerto Rico. And unfortunately, this storm is just a little speck here on the map. Looks like it's going to move right over Bermuda. This could be the first significant storm since 2003 for Bermuda. So unfortunately, uh, certainly something to watch there, especially if you have friends or family there. Fox Connecticut seven day forecast after the front comes through Thursday. It's not all that much cooler, but it's certainly a lot less humid for Friday and Saturday. The real chill arrives Sunday into Sunday night. We'll have highs in the 50s low temperatures in the 30s and we could even see some widespread frost. So we are all mm. over the place and lots to talk about too with the chance for storms. Uh, we've got summer weather and even a hurricane in the forecast. Not for us though. Did You've got a lot to follow here. Did she say 30s? Yes, she did. Oh. <laughs> you heard that right. All right. All right. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. Back to our breaking news tonight. The Hartford City Council has approved the development plan that includes a baseball stadium for the city. Fox Connecticut's Javon Vital is at City Hall right now. He has the latest details on this plan, Javon. Yeah, good evening, Brent and Audrey. A momentous occasion. That's how it's being billed by city leaders tonight after the city council voted to approve the downtown north project. Six in favor, three city council members abstaining from this vote. So it does pass a very contentious night. Take a look and we'll bring you back over the events that began at six o'clock this evening and just wrapped up a few minutes ago. Basically, it was a back and forth. A lot of people going up, speaking in favor of this plan. A lot of people 
officials saying that the money could be better placed elsewhere. However, the council did vote to approve this plan worth about $350 million, would include a uh, full-service grocery store, a restaurant and brewery, as well as new housing, retail, office space, parking, and of course, the crown jewel of this project, that minor league ballpark. And joining me now to talk a little more about this is the owner of the uh, Rock Cats, Josh Solomon. So Josh, a very big day for you. How are you feeling right um, now? I'm thrilled. I couldn't be happier uh, at the outcome. Uh, it was great to see the, the residents of the city of Hartford really uh, step up and, and get behind something that's going to have a huge impact for years to come on the city. Uh, obviously a point of debate. A lot of people speaking out against this project. What can you say now to those folks to, to quell their fears or at least make them a little more comfortable with this project now? Well, I think, you know, uh, the folks from the north side of Hartford um, were thrilled and behind it 100 um, percent. I think for the folks that, that weren't as supportive, um, I think with time, they're going to see that it, it is a fantastic thing for the city of Hartford. Um, much needed spark in an area that has been neglected for a very long time. So I, I look forward to uh, having them share a hot dog and a beer uh, on, on uh, opening day. And one of the fears you might have heard in there, I'm sure, was uh, people saying that the Rock Hats would leave Hartford down the road. Uh, what can you say to those folks? Well, I, you know, I, I think those things are unfounded. I think as we as we stayed for 20 years in New Britain, um, we will fulfill every obligation, um, and uh, we're going to be here for a long time. I look forward to my kids uh, owning the Rock Hats here in, in Hartford. And finally, Josh, as far as the timeline goes, what can people expect in terms of construction and when opening day might come? Well, I think we look to start construction um, in the next 60 to 90 days, um, and uh, first pitch will be in uh, April of 2016. All right, Josh Solomon, owner of the Rock Hats, thank you very much for speaking to us, Josh, and congratulations. Of course, a whole lot of ground to cover, and we're going to have uh, the very latest up-to-date news on FoxCT.com, and of course, tomorrow morning for the follow-ups on the Fox Connecticut Morning News. But for now, reporting live in front of Hartford City Hall, Javon Vital, Fox Connecticut. Fallen firefighter Kevin Bell's cause of death is still not known. The Hartford Police Union says Bell died after suffering critical injuries and cardiac arrest, but the state medical examiner's office says it requires further study to determine the exact cause. Fellow firefighter Jason Martinez was also seriously injured in the Blue Hills Avenue fire. He is currently in critical condition at Bridgeport Hospital with burns over 10% of his body. The cause of the fire is also still under investigation. A violent crime in the middle of one of Boston's most popular tourist destinations has the city on edge tonight. Police say 34 year old Bodio Hutchinson, a homeless man with a violent history, was arrested and charged with stabbing two city park rangers on the Boston Common earlier this afternoon. One of the injured rangers suffered life threatening injuries. The second ranger is reported to be in stable condition tonight. Witnesses to the stabbing followed Hutchinson and provided cell phone video to police. Hutchinson faces attempted murder charges. Oscar Pistorius was back in court today for the second day of his sentencing hearing. Last month, Pistorius was found guilty of the negligent killing of his girlfriend Reva Steenkamp in February of last year. Today, the athlete's manager took the stand. Now, after he killed Steenkamp, Oscar Pistorius allegedly offered her family $34,000, but Reva's mother rejected it, calling it blood money, according to her lawyer. Cash is now an issue at uh, Pistorius' sentencing hearing. According to an attorney for the Steenkamp family, they have accepted more than $500 a month from Pistorius and plan on paying all that back. Earlier today in court, the prosecutor questioned a defense witness about all this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, to me, the Cardinals and San Francisco Giants are two of the top organizations in all of baseball. The Cardinals, remember, were involved in some crazy endings in the World Series with the Red Sox last year. And tonight, another somewhat bizarre ending. It was 4-4 in the 10th. The first two Giants reach base. All right, they're going to try and sacrifice them over. Randy Choate fields it. He has one play to first base, but he throws wide of a lunging Colton Wong, who knows all about crazy endings. Brandon Crawford scores. The Giants win it 5-4 in 10, and now lead the series two games to one you know it, it's intense it's, it's pretty exciting these are these are two really really good ball clubs uh, really well managed uh, you know a lot of 
a lot of guys that have, have, have been here before. So, um, you know, it is a chess match, and, and these games are their battles, and it comes down to the little things. Game three of the ALCS, Kansas City is ready to explode. The Royals' defense was outstanding in winning games one and two in Baltimore tonight. Check out Mike Moustakis making like Derek Jeter against Oakland about a dozen years ago, also in the postseason, leaning over the rail. Great grab by the Royals' third baseman. Bottom of the sixth, we're tied at one. Runners on the corners, one out. Billy Butler lifts the ball to left. Plenty deep for Jared Dyson to tag and score. The Royals win again, two to one. They lead three games to none, one game away from the World Series. Islanders Rangers at the Garden. Rick Nash gains his own. Nash from a bad angle slips it past Yaroslav Halak. The Rangers lead at one. He's off to a great start. But hey, if I'm a Wolfpack defenseman, I just raise your hand and try to get yourself to Broadway. The Rangers D has been awful. Mike Costa, the terrible giveaway leading to the tying goal by John Tavares. It got worse for Vino and company. Third period, Brock Nelson all alone in front. Henrik Lundqvist hung out to where's the defense? The Islanders win it six to three. The Rangers have dropped three in a row with two of those coming on home ice. The, their their uh, AHL affiliate, the Wolfpack, open up on Saturday night here in Hartford. That's a check on sports. I'm Rich Coppola. The news continues, but first, these messages. Stay with us. Celebrity Name Game. Weeknights at 7.30, only on Fox Connecticut. Only! <laughs> This is kind of fun. A sheriff's deputy found nearly $3,000 in $100 bills just blowing around in the wind in the Minneapolis area. Yeah, here's how it all went down. For people living in rural Stearns County, the peace and quiet, well, it's priceless. But the sheriff's deputy recently hit the jackpot there when she spotted what looked like leaves swirling near some trees. She soon realized the leaves were $100 bills and spent the next half hour grabbing the whirlwind of cash like a contestant on a game show. <laughs> it's a dream. Now, exactly. Now other people in the neighborhood are hoping they'll get out there and find some cash. If they got it all, I guess I'm going to quit looking. Oh, cheapers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you let me know if it happens again. <laughs> Why? Because I'd like to find some too. <laughs> Gee, he doesn't sound like he's from rural Minnesota. <laughs> uh, by the way, that deputy found a total of $3,010 along with the withdrawal slip from a local bank, and it turns out someone withdrew the money from a nearby credit union to pay for some work done on his car. He accidentally oh, left man. it on his truck before oh. driving off and losing it all. I'm assuming that he gets it back. Ho hopefully he did. If they got all the money and they found out who it belonged I've to. I've done I'm that sure a million times with a coffee, with coffee, but not a couple grand <laughs> pack of cash. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have a summer send off tomorrow, guys. Beautiful. We love you. Temperatures in the 70s again. Middle and upper chance for an isolated shower, especially later in the day. Showers and storms on Thursday, and then we'll cool things off as we head into the weekend, guys. So enjoy while it lasts. Summer send off. I like it. All right, that's going to do it for us. Thanks a lot for joining us tonight at 11. Two and a half men is next. Have a good night.